How's everyone doing tonight? Mike here. So I've got a great video for, for everyone. Tonight we're going to talk about the reishi mushroom, specifically the Ganoderma multipylium. All right. Now this is a mushroom I've cultivated for many years and it's tonight I'm going to show you and talk to you about a method that I feel anyone can do. This is great for beginners. Uh, this is like the foolproof way for someone to cultivate a reishi mushroom. And uh, the multipylium is also referred to as like the bonsai reishi. It, it grows these really cool gnarly antlers. And uh, it'll grow a conch too if you um, let it grow in a high oxygen environment where there's lots of air exchange. But if you leave it in a bag doing this method that I'm about to uh, show, you, show you called in vitro growing, you can actually form these antlers up and it makes these just cool formations. And um, there are actual papers that show that uh, medicinal compounds are higher um, in the antlers than actually in the conch form. So that's kind of cool if you're interested in um, that kind of stuff. But anyway, let's show you guys a clip of what a Ganoderma multipylium looks like uh, during in vitro growing, all right? So here it is. Okay, everyone, so this is the Ganoderma multipylium, the reishi mushroom. So let's all just kind of get familiar with this mushroom right now and take a look at some of the traits of it and just the different ways I'm growing this mushroom right now. So here we can see we have three different blocks of Ganoderma multipylium on this table here, and I've got them all growing in this top fruiting antler formation type of thing. Now these were all grown in vitro growing, just like I'm about to explain to you today, growing the mushroom within the bag. Now here is those mushrooms from another angle, and you can just kind of see how those antlers form up, and they will actually grow all the way up and kind of climb up the side of the bags, and uh, they're searching for light the whole time they're growing, so that's something to keep in mind. Now here's another one. This is actually a larger substrate block and I cut the top off just a little bit earlier than I did in those last ones. And you can see these antlers are nice and thick and chunky and we'll talk about how I accomplished all that right now. Okay, so that is the Ganoderma multipylium. And boy, those are wild mushrooms, right? Antlers and stuff. I remember the first time I had come across those just on the internet searching around I was just mind blown I was like dude what is that I was like I want to grow that you know so I was pretty pretty excited about just trying to grow it because I thought it looked so cool and um anyway it's really easy to do all right so at first I was kind of wondering how, how difficult would this be you know but I just want to say for a beginner if you're a beginner and you're tuning in right now th this is a great mushroom for you just to try to do because I feel like it's almost one of the easiest ones to do and um, you get a really cool result you know you'll have a really awesome little block with antlers growing out of it you know and um, the reishi mushroom you can make teas out of it and uh, different stuff like that there's all people will uh, make extracts out of it and stuff like that too so there's different functional medicinal ways you can utilize this mushroom now what makes it so easy growing it in vitro and now just kind of allow me to explain so growing it in vitro we're basically preparing the substrate and we're going to put it in the bag the mushroom bag you'll hydrate it you know sterilize it like normal inoculate it and then um seal it and when you do that you basically will put it on a shelf in the incubation area like you normally would but here's the catch instead of having to put it in the fruiting room, you just don't do anything. You just set it and forget it. It's literally like the easiest thing to do. So as soon as you inoculate a bag, all you have to do is you just will put it on a shelf somewhere and you need to maintain a specific like lighting schedule and temperature range, but you don't have to worry about humidification because all the moisture is contained within the bag and the mycelium in the mushroom is basically just gonna feed and use on what's in that bag and then produce a mushroom from that within the bag. So um, it keeps a nice, clean, uh, sterile, contained environment. I think that's something that's really cool about it. Just because when you do cut these bags open, they are susceptible to contamination and stuff like that. But if you've done a good job preparing your substrate and inoculating that bag in your lab and doing it in a clean method and stuff like that, then it makes the rest of the process just super simple because all it's got, all you got to do is keep it in a nice controlled environment while it's sitting on a shelf. Everything stays in the bag and then it's just going to grow up in the bag. And there's a lot of mushrooms actually that you can grow in vitro in the bag and get wonderful results results okay and um, today I'm just going to specifically talk about reishi because each one of them kind of has their little tweaks and 
Right now, though, let's just take a look at it so you can see what some Ganoderma multipilium or reishi mushrooms actually look like when they're fruiting up in a bag, all right? Now, I used to have this mushroom shop, and the mushroom shop that I had, it was basically a retail store, and I had a cooler that I built that was kind of like a deli display cooler with like these lift up uh, doors on them and stuff. Anyway, I grew reishi mushroom on top of the deli cooler from time to time. So I'm gonna show you a clip of when I had some Ganoderma multipolyum bags growing on top of that cooler. And you can tell it was like in the middle of my store and we just grew them there no problem all the time and had great results. So this is something you could totally do in your home, like in your living room, in a closet, in the basement, anywhere really. All right, so let's take a look at that clip. All right, everyone. So here's a nice little in vitro reishi grow I did at my old mushroom retail shop. I just set these bags on top of the mushroom cooler we had there in the shop, just in like the main room of the mushroom shop where all the customers would come. And you could see those little antlers just kind of poking out the top of the substrate there. And uh, I had lights basically shining right over the top of these and they would grow towards the lights. You could see a little bit of moisture in that bag. The mushroom uses all that. But let's talk about this. Okay, cool everyone, so that was pretty sweet. You can see all those reishi mushrooms I had growing on top of that cooler in my old mushroom grow shop. And now, like I was saying, that was literally the main floor of the mushroom retail shop. So that's where the customers would do all their shopping and everything like that. And you, we could keep them just on top of the deli cooler there. We had no issues with it. And that's one of the cool things about in vitro growing. You can put these bags basically anywhere and you can grow mushrooms. And it shouldn't be in like direct sunlight or anything like that. I had LED lights right above it just for the, to light up the mushroom shop. And that's all it would take. I would basically flip the lights on in the morning. And then when I'd leave, I'd flip the lights off at night and that would be it. So that's all I'd have to do really. And they would just kind of grow towards the light. And it was just a super easy way to do it. It was cool there too, because you can kind of show them off. And um, it's just neat too, because you can always like look at them. You gotta, you gotta constantly pick the plastic off them too. That's one thing I wanna say. There is some maintenance to these things, and we'll get into that a little bit. But um, you can actually look at them you know, all the time. I just think all, all, there's a lot of cool things about in vitro growing, basically. It makes it easy, and you can check them out. Don't have to have a grow room. You know, Anyone can do it. It's great for a beginner. So uh, feel comfortable doing this, because literally all you have to do is prepare the substrate and then inoculate it. Um, seal the bag, put it on the shelf. It's like set it and forget it really. It's super simple. So let's talk about the substrate a little bit right now. So what am I actually growing the Ganoderma multipolyum on? I prefer Masters Mix, okay? And, but I use a reduced version of Masters Mix and just allow me to explain. I basically use 60% sawdust, 40% soybean hull for all of my species that I grow and I get the best results with that. So that's the um, mixture I prefer as far as my substrate goes. One thing I wanna to say too, that I could have actually done a little bit differently on those bags that I shown in that last clip on top of the cooler. I had them pretty full of substrate. I could have gone a little less full of substrate with those. Those were actually just some normal 10 pound bags I had made for my lion's mane and oyster cultivation. And we had extras and I just decided to do some reishi because I actually had some reishi spawn. So I just spawned those bags with reishi and I decided to grow them in vitro. Um, just because it was something easy I could do for the spawn I had available and we didn't need any more lion's mane or oyster. But if I was gonna grow that, or if I was gonna make those blocks specifically to grow the Ganoderma multipilum, I would have actually put a little less substrate in that block there, okay? And just let me explain it, this will make total sense, okay? So if you put a little less substrate in that bag, that'll allow your reishi mushroom and the antlers more room to grow up in the bag, all right? But like I said, those were just my standard blocks that I use for normal cultivation. And they were kind of extra, so I just spawned them with reishi. But if I was gonna make those specifically to get the best reishi results, I actually would have probably had like two pounds less substrate in there and then just spawn that as is. And that would have given me more room for them to grow up in the top of the bag. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. And one thing I wanna say about this mushroom too, it takes a little while to grow this thing, okay? this is not like one you're gonna grow for speed. This is one you're gonna inoculate the bag and you're just gonna let it sit on the shelf and chill. So like, this is one you're gonna take your time with 
it's not going to be nearly as fast as an oyster or a lion's mane or anything like that. So don't think you're doing something wrong if you inoculate it and then you put it on the shelf and it's like 70 degrees in there. You got the light schedule perfect and it's just not growing that fast. It takes a little bit of time for these. Usually I won't harvest these earlier than like 12 weeks, um, something like that, you know. So it'll take a little bit for those antlers to start forming up and then they'll turn into the full antler and they'll eventually reach the top of the bag. Now, one thing you need to do if you're gonna grow them in vitro like that, you need to make sure you're constantly kind of picking the plastic off the antlers. Otherwise, it'll kind of stick to them a little bit and you'll get better growth if you pick it off them a little bit. Another thing, the reishi always will grow towards light. So you can do different things to manipulate the growth of the Ganoderma multipolium just based on the light. So that's something to keep in mind. And one thing I want to say too is you can actually add just slightly more water in the bag. If you're, if you're hydrating them basically like 60% hydration or so, you might be able to add like a couple percentage uh, to that just because it's going to suck up quite a bit of that as it's uh, growing. You will, you'll see they tend to dry out just a little bit. So you can add a little bit of water. Don't get excessive with it. But what I'm saying is you can have a little overhydrated substrate and they still tend to do pretty good actually with something like in vitro growing of reishi mushroom. One thing I also want to talk about, okay, something growing in vitro with reishi mushroom, you need to make sure that your sterile technique, everything like that is really good. When it comes time to harvest that mushroom, you're going to want to make sure you're inspecting it, make sure you don't have any mold or anything like that, all right? If you're a beginner, um, this might be something you need to kind of uh, get around. There's a learning curve in the beginning when it comes to contamination and stuff like that. But since you are going to use the mushroom that's grown in that bag there, I don't like mold to be growing anywhere on that, okay? So let's just make sure you're using good, clean, uh, sterile technique. And you'll do really good and you'll get extremely consistent. The reishi is just so aggressive. So as long as you have everything else good and like your sterilization system and everything like that's good to go, you're not going to have any problems with this. But it's just something I want people to be aware about. Always make sure you're checking it for contamination still when it's time to harvest. Just because um, you're growing it in vitro, you still could have some uh, problems potentially if you don't have all your little kinks in your system ironed out. But that's all I really wanted you to be aware of there. One thing I want to say when you're harvesting the Ganoderma multipolium, these things are kind of tough, okay? They're kind of leathery. And I just want to say you can use like shears. That can help sometimes, like heavy duty um, shears and you can cut it off the substrate. That's a really good way to do it. And I've done that in the past and I've had great results with that. You could cut it off with a knife or something to, you know, just be careful that I feel like the shears are probably one of the safer ways to do it and it'll uh, save you a little bit of effort, I feel like. But overall, growing the reishi mushroom, the Ganoderma multipilium in vitro is very, very easy. It's super simple. I feel like it's great for all beginners. And then even if you're an expert, you know, it's still great because I like just being able to do it because you can grow reishi anywhere you want. You can just stick it anywhere in the house, you know, so it makes it simple. If any of you guys have questions about this method or anything about this, drop it in the comment section below and I will be more than happy to answer those for you. And other than that, I just hope you found this video helpful, informative. If you did, please drop this video a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you see more mushroom and farming content like this in the future. I will say there's many mushrooms you can grow in vitro and I'll do more videos specifically on in vitro growing for some of the other species that I like to grow in vitro. And there's pros and cons to all this. I think for the reishi though, it's a great mushroom to utilize this method. But that's all I got for you on this one, guys. I will catch you on the next one.